Hi, welcome back to our pipelining module. Previously, we have seen how pipelining in, is applied to laundry processing, and we have also outlined how should we pipeline a RISC-V data path. The conclusion there is that uh, if we would like to build a five-stage pipeline, we should divide the, the, the execution into five stages. Instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute, memory access, and write back. So let's take a look at our um, single cycle data path that we are well familiar with by now and see how should we pipeline it. So here is our single cycle data path. Um, it has familiar blocks that we have seen before, like the program counter, instruction memory, this uh, fix plus four adder, um, immediate generation, register file, branch, comp comparator, um, ALU, and the data memory and multiplexers that help configure this data path to execute a particular instruction. And of course, there is the control logic that configures the data path. We have also outlined that there are different stages of execution inside this data path. And those are the stages that we are going to break down into different pipeline stages. To recap, these stages are the instruction fetch, instruction decode with register read, um, ALU execute stage, memory access, and write back. The instruction fetch starts on the rising edge of a clock by um, incrementing the program counter. And it finishes by having the data read out of the instruction memory. Remember, our memory read and uh, register access are treated as combinational um, logic operations, um, meaning that they do not rely on clocks. And as soon as the data is stable at the output, we conclude, we assume that that operation has been concluded, has been finished. So as soon as the instruction here, instruction bits are stable at the output of the instruction memory, we move on to the next stage. Uh, the next stage is instruction decode, when, when, where we'll dis decode this memory and read the registers. Again, the registers are read like a combinational logic. So as soon as those values are stable at the, at the output of the register file, the instruction decode phase is done. We move on to the execution phase or the execute phase uh, where we perform the ALU op operation and that one is done when the output at the ALU is valid. We mo move on to the memory access phase if we are accessing memory in loads or stores and when we are done with that we, we move on to the write back where we write back into the destination register in the um, register file on the rising edge of a clock. So how do we pipeline? Well, we simply insert registers at appropriate places. At the, at, in, on the boundary between each of these execution phases, we need to put registers. So we are going to have registers here that are conveniently labeled as IFID, IDEX, EXMA, and MAWB. Two separate uh, various execution phases. Um, Let's take a look at a few of the highlights here, uh, although this looks fairly familiar. Um, first, at the end of the instruction fetch phase, we have two registers. We uh, have a register for the program counter and for the instruction. The latter one is particularly interesting. Keep in mind that we have five instructions in flight. While one of them is being fetched, we have copies of the previously fetched four instructions down the stream. So we need to save those instructions. That's why we have them in this register, then in the registers below that, and so on. Each one of these pipeline registers will have to hold the bits that correspond to the, uh, to the instruction that is being executed in that particular stage. Otherwise, we will know what that stage is doing. So that stage has to keep the instruction, but also control bits that correspond to that. The other thing to, that should be noticed here is that um, we are sending down the program counter and we are, we are pipelining the program counter value, um, but we are not sending down the PC plus four value. 
um, instead we are recreating PC plus four value in the memory access stage. Um, that's a design decision. Um, it is cheaper to have a fixed function adder plus four adder instead of using one, two, three uh, registers to store three 32-bit PC plus four values. The other thing that we notice here, we are using uh, the PC value more upstream here in the first three stages of execution, and then we need only PC plus four down in uh, uh, the memory access stage to send it down to be written back if needed. And that is essentially it. It looks fairly straightforward, although there are a few catches that we are going to see a bit later. The other thing that I just wanted to highlight here is this fact that we actually have five instructions that are in, instructions that are in flight here. Um, the fifth one is not shown that is in the right back stage. So the oldest instruction, the first, the one that made it the furthest down the pipe, the first, the first one that went into the pipe <laughs> made it the furthest down the pipe is the one in the memory access stage, which is OR. Then the one that is a little younger than that one is SLT. And then we have a uh, store word. And the one that is being presently um, fetched is load word. Keep in mind that we do have to pack everything that is associated with that instruction into that pipeline stage. So the instruction that is in the memory access will have its copy in the register here and also the values that correspond to it in the, the associated registers that precede that stage. And the same thing here happens um, or before the uh, execute stage. We have copies of everything that is needed for that particular instruction because we are going to get new values for the previous for the next instruction which is store word. The other thing to keep in mind besides the instruction bits we also need to save the decoded control bits. Remember we have control logic that tells us what each stage should be doing, how each stage should be configured. So once when we decode the instruction, we, in addition to our instruction, we need to send down the stream all the control bits that correspond to that instruction. Um, so um, each of these um, registers that are storing the program counter are going to be a bit wider to save the necessary control signals. So for example, our uh, memory access stage register uh, or the register that is sitting between the memory access and the write back has to con save the control signals that correspond to that final write back um, over there. And then, um, you know, between write back and memory access, uh, between the, the execute and memory access, we need to save the bits that correspond to the memory access and the write back stages and so on. That is basically it. Um, there are some things, however, that are particular to, this, to the situation where we have multiple instructions in flight, and which are called hazards. We're going to take a look at the hazards next. See you then.